Okay, happy Friday. I'm so happy to see everybody. Um, I know that uh, Caroline uh, flew out to Columbia last night, so she's probably sleeping, but um, we've got a lot going on in the team. There's a lot of energy happening uh, all over the United States and all the countries that we're in, and it's Friday, and that's always a fun day for all of us. Um, I hope everybody's planning a great weekend. I was telling Randy on the Zoom before the Zoom that uh, it's absolutely beautiful in Southern California and um, and you know I get to play tennis today so I'm very grateful for that um, I'm putting this up for the first couple of days in March because the happy acts if you haven't put this into your phone you get a happy act every day to do and today's happy act you don't have to uh, do it but um, these are suggestions for you if you want to do a happy act and so this one is pick up 10 pieces of trash um, I don't recommend you go on the side of a freeway. It's very, very um, dangerous. But um, if you, I could probably pick up 10 pieces of trash around my house with my two kids living here right now. So um, goal setting, so SMART goals. I've got my eight points a day. I'm, I, um, I added one to my, my goal setting, which was filling my funnel, my Class A prospects. So far this month, um, I have two new Class A prospects and it's already the um, third of the month, so I feel really good about that. I want to sponsor one new person, and I want to be NLC qualified. Um, these are our point system, and this is what I use. If you, you can use anything you want in terms of just doing the activities, uh, but doing these points gives us a little bit of a fun game to you know, track our activities and, and, and hopefully take a picture and put it on the page so that we can see what you're up to. It really inspires us. So today, what I wanted to really talk about was belief and desire. When I got involved with Miriam, it was interesting because <clears throat> I heard Jeff Olson, his first speech that I ever heard him make was he talked about belief and desire. And I kind of equated it to what I was doing at the time, I was running my company, Robert was running his company, and I never really thought about what my belief or desire was in my talent agency. I just knew in my heart that I wanted to do something. I, I put together the capital for it. I spent you know, close to $100,000 that I had saved um, to, to do the business. I had absolutely, I mean, I had a little bit of fear but I didn't have the kind of fear where I was not going to do it. I just knew that I had this burning desire to put together my company and I was super excited about it. And I had the belief in myself that I was going to be successful. And I have to tell you that $100,000 was a lot of money for me. That was almost 20 years ago. And it's a lot of money for me today. And, um, but I didn't even really think about how, how much belief I must have had in myself and my desire was at such a all time level to be able to take that money and start a business. And I'll tell you that first year I didn't even take a paycheck. I never even made a dime. I never brought anything into the, into the household. I literally worked my business um, eight to 10 hours a day. And I had such a desire to be successful on so many levels in terms of what I wanted to personally accomplish I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about how, you know, I was lucky because, you know, Robert and I had put away money and he had a, he was doing his lending business. So I had a little bit of a, a cushion there, but every dime I made, I put back into my business and I really, really felt like I was doing the right thing. And of, of course it ended up that I did do the right thing, but I did have a solid year. And when I say I didn't make any money, I really, I really didn't bring home a paycheck. I, you know, if I needed something specific or I, and there was any money there, I've, of course I could, I could draw on something, but my, my whole goal was to really build the business. And so I had a tremendous amount of belief and I saw this slide, you know, our belief becomes our thoughts, our thoughts become our words, our words become our habits, our habits become our values and our values become our destiny um, by Gandhi. And I thought it was really apropos because Whenever you do anything, you're, you have to have a belief system, um, mostly in yourself. You have to know that no matter what happens, uh, you're going to be able to get through it. And 
you know, that's one of the things that I've learned here at Miriam, which is so interesting to me is that I didn't know that I needed to have that kind of belief system then, but I know how incredibly important it is now. And what's so interesting is, is that when we get started with Miriam, we may have tremendous belief ourselves, but the people that we get started don't always have the same belief that we have. And sometimes they have to borrow our belief. And sometimes we have to show them how they can believe in this company and what this company um, is made of and how we feel basically about what we know. And all of us in this group, we know we're here. We've, we've built a little bit of a business. We've definitely gone through the trials and tribulations of business that will never go away. That always is going to be there. But we've built a strong belief in ourselves about the product. We've built a strong belief in ourselves about our systems. We've weathered some storms. We've made it better. And we've gone out there and continued to duplicate that process. So when you think about yourself in, in maybe your belief has maybe isn't as strong as it was, you know, uh, when you first got started with Miriam, maybe people have said no to you. Maybe, you know, everything hasn't gone your way, but you're still here. And so if you, if you are, if you don't have the kind of belief that you used to have, the way that you build your belief is by showing up. And all of you show up here, um, show up to your market party, show up to your training, show up to the things that help you build your belief, show up to Miriam U. The company provides these tools for us to help us with our belief and help us build a foundation so that we can help others to borrow our belief when they need it. And so I, I wanted to kind of share that with you and kind of take you back to that time where when you got started and you know, why you got started and how you had to have that belief in yourself to know that you wanted to start a new business. And then of course, desire. Desire is something that, you know, I had um, such amazing desire when I started my company uh, 20 years ago. I wanted to rule the world. I didn't know how my desire was going to be with Miriam because I really, honestly, I didn't even really have any idea what this was going to mean to my life. But Desire is a big deal because you have to have desire in order to push through. You have to have your belief and your desire together to really build that foundation. And that also is something that some people may not have that they need to borrow from you. And desire is a very, very awesome thing because it's never ending. If you have desire to do something, you won't stop. You know, you, you have the belief in what you're doing and the desire and together that creates just an amazing energy and then co being coachable. So I'll admit to each and every one of you that I was not always the most coachable person when I started with Miriam. And the reason why was that I felt like I knew how to run a business. I felt very confident in my ability to build a business because I had a history of building a business, a couple of different businesses. And I felt really, <clears throat> you know, I felt really good about it. I didn't, I wasn't as open as I probably should have been to not only being coachable, but to really understanding how a new industry was going to be for me and what that would entail. And so over the last five years, I've really opened myself up to not only being coachable, but to being open to other people's, you know, strategies, ideas, and I really embrace it now. I love, I'm sort of a um, person who I want to learn everything I possibly can from everybody, whether I utilize it or not, I'm very open to hearing it. And I think that, you know, everybody on this Zoom who has a team and is maybe transmitting the same kind of information when they can to the people that they're building, that's a big deal. Um, not only you being coachable, but being able to coach people and together here, we learn a lot together. And so we're able to, you know, kind of broadcast that to the people that we bring into this business. So having a, you know, faith, having, um, belief, um, having a burning desire to do something unique and different and great for you. And then being able to be coached and be a great coach and being coachable is, 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 is the ingredients to, you know, doing that, but it all really starts with the why. And I think, you know, last night I was at a market party with Laura in, um, 
in Hermosa Beach, and we were at Karen Slater's house, who is a kind of a different team than ours. Super nice, um, amazing lady. Leanne was there. A lot of people, and we had a, I think one guest, um, but of but more brand partners there. And some of the guests had canceled, and you know. I really embraced it because I love the fact that I know why I'm there. I'm not there for um, every, like to have 10 guests there. I'm there for the ones who want to show up. I'm, I'm there for the people that have a desire to be there. I'm there for, you know, each and every brand partner that has a desire to show up and maybe learn something and maybe I can learn something from them. And so, you know, I, I go, I get in check with my why all the time because you know, your why changes. And there's many reasons why you want to show up to this for yourself and for other people. And so, you know, all of it starts with your why, all of your desire, all of your faith, all of the coaching, all of that starts with your why. And so that's the kinds of stuff that we need to remind ourselves of and remind the people that we sponsored into this business, go back to your why, go back to what you're you know, beliefs are, go back to what your desire is. Are you going to be coachable? Are you open to some ideas? Are you open to doing things different if things aren't working? And so building your list again and starting over in this group is something that we should be doing on a weekly, daily basis, adding people to our list, redefining the people, going back to the people that we went, you know, to many, even years ago, which uh, Robert had a meeting with a a guy yesterday that he hadn't seen in maybe 25, 30 years and they had dinner and they reconnected and he said it was almost like they, no time had gone by. They used to be business partners in the mortgage industry and he just looked him up on Facebook, found him. They had dinner, him and his brother come to found out his brother was in Amway like 30 years ago and made a six figure income and told the, you know, told Robert that he would be very interested in looking into this company. He's not in network marketing now. He hasn't been for a long time, but Robert kind of went out of his comfort zone and, and just, you know, decided to contact somebody that he hadn't talked to in 30 years, not knowing that um, he had a history. So these people are Filipino. They're um, they have a huge network of people. So, you know, it, it's interesting when that happens to you and what you're willing to do and dig a little deeper. And so he was added to our list. He was somebody that, you know, we added to our list last week. It wasn't somebody who was on our list from day one. So always going back to your list, rebuilding that list, re-looking at that list, looking at people that you may have had been on your chicken list for a long time. And now you have the courage and the fortitude and the tenacity to maybe go and ask those questions and, and maybe, you know, set up a dinner or set up a coffee. And then, you know, for our new people, um, one of the things that, you know, we need to do this month, this is something that we need to have a call of action. Anybody that we've brought on or anybody that's in our team, it needs to actually start with us. We need to have our real results parties. We need to put them on the books and on the calendar. We need to check our calendar today and tomorrow, this weekend, and really start planning out. We have a long month, and we have a lot to do, and we have the ability to really make some amazing magic happen. But the only way that we're going to be able to do that is if we start with ourselves and we open up our calendar and we say, okay, I personally am going to put two parties on the books myself. And then I'm going to call into the people that are on my team that have a desire, that have a belief, that are coachable, and that have a, a why they want to do this and help them to implement those activities into their life to help them create some residual income, create some community, create whatever it is that they're looking for. Um, but you might have to help them do it. So that might, may mean you might have to make some phone calls. You might have to get out your calendar and say, when's a good time? Here's when I'm available. I'd love to help you. You know, I, I used to, um, tr go from place to place to place every single night just to show up for an hour. It didn't matter to me, you know, whoever was there, it didn't matter to me. If nobody was there, we trained and we talked about how we could be better. So there's lots of things that you can do with your team and incorporate um, your real results parties and your uh, three or free parties and things like that. So what I've been talking about this whole 
time is actually not giving up on yourself in, and reinvigorating yourself, going back to why you came, got involved in this side business. We kind of talked about that last night with some of the people about, you know, why did we get into this business and what has it done? And Karen shared, which I thought was so great. She said, you know, I, this has completely changed my life. It, I was in such a dark place four or five years ago. I was basically almost homeless. I was, you know, kind of starting my life over. And my girlfriend said, I think this bottle of Miriam could change your life. And, and, I, and she said, I literally laughed at her. I said, a bottle of cream is not going to change my life. <laughs> you know, and she said, now I look back and I think, oh my gosh, just by trying that bottle in the lowest point of my life has completely changed her life. She can't believe it. And so I think those are sometimes the things that we kind of discount and we don't really recognize as much as the community and the support that we receive when we put ourselves into a situation that we might not be very comfortable with. We might not think it's going to be the answer, but it actually is something that in, in, uh, just encompasses you know, everything about our life and makes it better. So here we are with each other, where we draw on each other, where we help one another to become stronger in everything that we do, not just Miriam, but everything that we do in the course of a day. And we inspire one another to do better. So that again is something that when you bring somebody into this business or you're helping somebody maybe recharge their business or restart their business, they have to, you know, they ha they're looking to you to help them build their belief, build their plan, build their life, build their community, because that's what they're looking for. So um, I also wanted to remind everybody that tomorrow morning, I'm going to be doing two Getting Started Right Zooms. They will only be about 15 minutes uh, so or 20 minutes at the most. Um, and I'm doing them because we had you know, quite a few people that got started with this. But here's the thing. If you have a brand partner, that may want to restart, they should get on the Zoom. If you have the idea that you'd like to do one of your own getting started right Zooms or calls, you should get on the Zoom. Um, they're obviously on the West Coast, it's pretty early uh, uh, at 6.30, so I don't really expect anybody on the West Coast to be on that one, but the East Coast, if, if they're available. And then on the West Coast at nine o'clock, we're gonna do it, which is before the regionals. Uh, that are happening in, um, so even if you're uh, traveling or commuting, you can put Zoom on your phone and um, maybe listen in. But I think that one of the things that we started uh, many years ago, which we haven't done, so we're going back to what works, was we did getting started right calls. And we actually were very consistent about it, where we got people on the phone and we basically just said, hey, Let's get you started right. And I know Anna Camp does probably one of the best guests getting started right calls I've ever heard. So we'll definitely have her come on in the next couple of weeks to go over that with us. But I think for tomorrow, if you have anybody that you want to send um, anywhere in the country, um, you know, this will be a good example. I want to congratulate Gilbert and Randy. You know, we had a discussion, I think, last week about just implementing ideas and that, you know, they really could, you know, start their own market party if they felt like that was something that would be beneficial to them. And I know in, in the area that they're in, there's market parties in different areas, a half hour over there, maybe an hour over there, but they have a network of people that this business meeting might be very beneficial. So they decided to implement the idea and they're having their first market party on March 29th, which I am so thrilled that they implemented this. Um, and Marlou is going to help them and they are doing it. And, um, I told Randy, I hope they put it live on Facebook because I would love to be able to be there last night when we did our RRP, we had two people from one person from Seattle zoom in and one person from, uh, Ashland in Oregon. And I'll tell you what, it's a great place to be able to bring people in via zoom or via, via a Facebook live because, when Robin got started with Miriam, she Skyped into my RRP. It was so late in the, the East Coast, but she Skyped into my RRP. And the next morning when I woke up, she had signed up to become a brand partner. We hadn't even talked. So things can happen uh, by just opening yourself up to that. So congratulations, you guys. 
on uh, that. So that's our Zoom for today on Friday. And I just want you guys to know that I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'll open it up for questions if you want. If not, we can go out there and make it a absolutely fabulous day. Thank you for the kudos, Annie. Appreciate it very much. And I appreciate you giving us the idea. It was great. Well, it wasn't my idea because uh, it is what uh, what the company does. So it was, but I can't take credit for it, Randy. So, all right, you guys. Anybody have any questions or comments? Annie, this is Laura. <clears throat> you guys, I just wanted to share. You know, it was so great. I I haven't heard Annie in a little while. Um, go through the slides just because of where I'm living. But it was amazing to listen to her last night. I remembered the very first market party that I went to where she and Dale Munger were speaking. And I was so in awe that she brought the same energy and excitement that she had four years ago. And it just really hit me that that's such an important component when we share our passion with this. And, you know, I've been doing this, um, the RRP, for a couple of weeks now, and it's been great for me as a brand partner to get into that consistency rhythm again. Like Annie said, we only had one guest, but several of us had people that are like, I promise I'll be there next week. So I just was reminded of the power of that consistency and the passion, and I really want to thank you. And I love that people zoomed in too, because that gives people an alternative. So thank you, Annie, so much. Oh, it was so much fun, Laura. It was great. Mm -hmm. And I got home in 45 minutes. It was like, whoo. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Anybody else? Okay, so we're going we're gonna to get out our calendars today and really help people. Now, next week, we have a lot of different uh, trainers that are going to be training, and I'm really excited. So if you have people that um, you think might want to get on our Zoom, even though it's early, uh, definitely it's going to be a good week. Um, I'm going to be traveling to Dallas on, on Wednesday, and I'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, so if anybody you know is going to be in Dallas, let them know that I'll be there. I know Randy's going, and I think Gilbert's going, and I know Karen's going to be there. So um, we definitely want to connect uh, with anybody that you know. And if there's anybody that you have there that you want us to meet with, let us know, and uh, we'll be there. So anyway, I'll see you guys on Monday. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend, and we'll uh, talk soon. Thank you, Anne.